pennies on the dollar and you'll get it all back at the end of the year. So it's, so it's basically incentivizing all of this automation. And now we're at a point where we're sitting here all stuck in our houses and everybody's being forced to use these computers and these devices and these, 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 these regulations um, that, that we'll go over you know, when we get a chance uh, – are 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 gonna, are gonna ram it through. You're gonna ram it through hard. Yeah, we're gonna have to take a break in a minute. But it's funny how you mentioned uh, uh, Steve Mnuchin, who just got a five hundred billion dollars slush fund. It's uh, just it's unaccountable to anybody. You can just imagine what he's gonna do with that. You also mentioned uh, again the Pavlov's dog and the, the response and the treat at the end of your little. <laughs> you know, you, and you know, just like I always wondered, what is this business? Who cares about the likes on a YouTube? Or the like, the little heart on Facebook, or who cares? I don't care about that stuff. But I, I guess that's your little treat, you know. Oh, I put up a, I, I, do, I was good, and I got this little treat back that the people like my video. Yes, that, you, yeah. you got hit it right on the head. Yeah. I, I should mention that the be, this behaviorist method is used not, it's used at every level of society. It's used for marketing with your retinal. You know, they, they combine the rhetorical principles with the stimulus response method to get you. Right, basically to have an emotional reaction to either you know corporate propaganda, government propaganda, but just like you said, the likes and clicks. This is why certain platforms don't have thumbs down. Right? It's easier to monetize thumbs up. Now, the other thing is when you're on, a, if you're scrolling through Facebook, if you want to have a post centered, the only way you can censor it is to have the next post pulled up. So in other words, the only way to have the full reward of each post is to be stimulated by the next post, which is get you addicted. And that's how you get stuck reeling through it because it's, a, it's it, they've, they've admitted that it's designed to basically uh, trigger your dopamine center and get you addicted to this whole stimulus response reward cycle. Yeah. Well, if you understand this, why don't you use it to rule the world there, John Claus? <laughs> how come you're not out there? Uh, or we could trick people into joining my members section, man. I'll cut, I'll cut you in. We'll split the money. But real question, one more quick question before we, before we come together with a plot here to scam my audience. Oh, you mentioned uh, that, that these characters, these elitists with these uh, power-hungry, uh, selfish motives, uh, took over universities. That makes sense. And they took over psychology. I can see that. No, but medical hospitals, what is their motivation for uh, investing? Is it, it's not altruistic. <laughs> They're not worried about our health. Why, why are they in hospitals? What are they doing in there to us? Well, that's – so here's the thing, and this might get – this is kind of jumping towards the end. Uh, okay, well, then, then let's wait. Then let's – because we're going to take a commercial break anyway. But, but real, a quick sentence, and then we'll take a commercial break. What do you think? So if they can medicalize education, oh, sure. then – and if they can also think about the crisis, where if they can medicalize or if they can police your health, right? Then basically, education is not a matter of what you, what you're able to think up in your head. It's not a matter of of learning how to think. It's not even a matter of learning what to think. It's a matter of basically cowing to whatever it is uh, sciences. Uh, cure for the disease that is your inability to learn. And it has to do with the difference between instead of providing education based on freedom of choice and consciousness, it's basically a cure. And cure doesn't have to do with justice or equality or ethics. It just has to do with whether or not it gets rid of the disease. So they can say that your mental processes are diseases. And if they can calculate it with AI and they have the medical profession behind it, then you won't be able to, you, you won't have an argument to say, I disagree with this method of education, I disagree with this philosophy of education. I just, I, I, you can't say that I think that we should have the classical method of learning and not the stimulus response psychological condition method because to them that's not part of the paradigm. It's just what's more effective. It's not whether or not it's humane, it's not whether or not it's ethical, it's not whether or not it's moral, it's not whether or not, right? And so that's. Right, I, I can expand. No, I got, I'm I'm picking up what you're putting down there, and and, and anybody who has, has visited a medical office in the past few years can see it's a whole different uh, um, attitude in there. Very clinical, very dispassionate, very uh, hostile in, in many ways. Uh, and forget what they're billing you. Okay, we'll be right back with more of a uh, adjunct professor John Kleisek, and we're talking about his book, uh, School World Order. School World Order. The Technocratic Globalization of Corporatized Education. We'll be right back with more of uh, 
John Kleinsack after this. And don't forget, too, we're going to be on Thursday live at uh, GetVocal.com. Uh, right back after these messages. And now a word from our sponsors. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to sing a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. Tina Helmuth is writing an ongoing series of fact fiction books that boldly takes on today's most heinous crimes. Suffer the Little Children, The Wrath of the Father, and Unbreakable. Deeply researched and mixed with the supernatural, good versus evil makes these thrillers hard to put down. Available at lulu.com in paperback or ebook. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, 7 days a week. Just log into kmdlaw.com. That's kmdlaw.com. Or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW. That's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents, they handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be, because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is Investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, Private Investigator Ed Opperman. Uh, don't forget to check me out the, this Thursday night at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time at GetVocal.com, our new uh, live video blog, uh, video podcast, they call it. We're here today with John, Professor John Kleisek, uh, talking about his book, uh, School World Order. Uh, the Technocratic Globalization of Corporatized Education. Professor Kleisek, what did you want to tell us next, about the coronavirus uh, situation or, or the, the legislation? Uh, so they kind of go together. I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to – it's a quagmire to talk about the actual yeah. virus. I just want to look at what I'm qualified to speak about, which is uh, the education reforms that they're going to ram through as a result of this. And, you know – uh, I know it's crisis and all that, but uh, you know, <laughs> crisis are always good times for people to ram through stuff you might not like and might not have a chance to get rid of it if it goes in. So, you know, you have 30 days to vote on these new federal regulations. Uh, it's proposed rules for 85 FR 18638, 
Uh, I sent uh, I sent you the link if you wanted to post it on your site or something. People find it easier. But basically, what it's going to do is this. Okay, it's designed to ram through CBE or competency based education. Uh, another euphemism they use is direct assessment. Another euphemism is adaptive learning. Okay, I just mentioned that several times. Uh, these all go together. They're all basically uh, software-based or subscription-based software services, and they're go at your own pace. Okay? Um, this term CBE, just to give you a sense of how much, how, how, how much this is focused on getting the CBE through. It's used 147 times in the bill, which is only 64 pages long. If you read S, Every Student Succeeds Act, which is the overarching federal legislation for all federal ed, it's a 392 pages. There's only six references to CBE in there. All right, so this is basically all about CBE, uh, competency-based education. Okay, so how it works. This is how it works. And I, I, I saw this coming when um, – when they first went on spring break, when we were on spring break, I saw Harvard close, and I says, we're all going to shut down now because I know how schools think, um, and they're not going to be the only ones to not shut down, and then somebody gets sick, and then they get called out for whether they agree with what Harvard did or not. So the next thing I saw was they go to uh, all the trustees, all the presidents, and everybody, they go to these uh, to this board where they need to talk to IAI, Illinois Articulation Initiative. Basically, it's a state board that basically tells us whether or not the stuff we're doing can transfer across state or to other states. Uh, so basically, you know, legalizes your curriculum. So when, anytime I make a syllabus, I have to have the IAI number next to my syllabus to demonstrate that which, which, um, which standards I'm meeting, et cetera, so that when they uh, look at it later, they can uh, audit us or whatever. They can check to make sure we do it. Okay. So what they did was they got from IAI the authority to basically wing it as far as uh, uh, online ed goes. I've never done online ed before. I've done some online tutoring stuff, but I've never done online ed. To do online ed, you have to have an online cert. So they got rid of that cert. And then there's other things that are required as far as how the modules are put together. Okay. Uh, so they gave they gave us all uh, loopholes to do that. Well, now Betsy DeVos is giving is going to, going to the federal level. Now they got the stimulus bill ready, they got all this money ready to go. Betsy DeVos is trying to basically do the same thing at the federal level. So I want to read you some of the quotes here and um, break them down for you. Okay. So the first quote is this. It says, CBE programs measure student progress based on their demonstration of specific competencies rather than sitting in a seat or at a computer for a prescribed period of time. Many CBE programs are designed for students to learn at their own pace. And one of the ways they do this is through what they call subscription-based service. Okay, so another thing that they used to get on me about was, was attendance. All right. So you have to do your 10-day attendance and then your midterm attendance. If you don't report it on time, everybody gets mad at you because what happens is uh, it messes with the money because the federal dollars, the financial aid, can only stay in that uh, stay paid to that student at that school if they can demonstrate that they are moving towards completion, showing good effort to actually complete the course. So they do it 10 days in, they do it halfway through. If you're working at your own pace on a CBE program or on a subscription-based service, there's, there is no 16-week. There is no 8-week. It's just I'm going to pay you per month until I finish all the modules. Could be a couple months. Could be three years. But there's no way to get – it's hard to give them federal dollars because they don't have it uh, measured out in terms of what they call Carnegie unit or course credits or these, these units that they can measure whether or not the student is participating. So they're giving them basically the loopholes uh, to get around that. Okay, so another quote to demonstrate it says, given the limitations of this proposed definition on a student's eligibility to receive additional disbursements, that means federal funds, we believe it unnecessary and needlessly burdensome for an institution's SAP policy to include PACE requirements for subscription-based programs. So they're telling you that you don't have to have, or at least at best they're going to be extremely lax with how you show that your students on their subscription-based programs are actually doing them. Right? Are they are they subscribed and they never log in, or like if they log in, how hard are they trying? How, how much progress are they making? Things like that. Okay. Uh, and then it says one committee member wanted even more flexibility for the disbursement. 
of funds, okay? It ties in, it, it defines CBE as adaptive learning. So in other words, um, uh, another, another term they need to use to demonstrate that they can get money is called academic engagement. 